Hi, everybody. Oh, I know it's been a while. I ask for your prayers. Um, I'm going through some stuff right now. My, my dad decided to flip out on me today. I don't know why. I, I asked him a simple question, and well, it turned into a scream session you know, with them using very colorful language on me. But I'm sure he's got more. He'll say I did something to him. But I like it was asked a simple question. <sighs> anyway, so I asked for prayers for that. Um, today we'll start in chapter 11. And I'm, I'm having, uh, I guess, family issues that. I knew nothing about, so what's new? So, anyway, enough for me. Chapter 11, verse 1. Now a man named Lazarus was sick. He was from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. This Mary, whose brother Lazarus now lay sick, was at the was the same one who poured perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair. So the sisters sent a word to Jesus, Lord, the one you love is sick. When he heard this, Jesus said, This sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory that God's Son may be glorified through it. Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. Yet when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed there where he was two more days. Then he said to his disciples, let us go back to Judea. But Rabbi, they said, a, sh a short while ago the Jews tried to stone you, and yet you're going back there? Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours of daylight and a man who walks by day will not stumble, for he sees this world's light. But it's when he, he walks by night that he stumbles, for he has no light. After he had said this, he went on to tell them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to wake him up. His disciples replied, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get better. Jesus had been speaking of, of his death. But his disciples thought he might, he, he meant natural sleep. So then he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And for your sake, I'm glad I was not there. So that you may believe, let us go to him. Then Thomas called Didymus, said to the rest of the disciples, let us also go, that me we, die, me we, die, we may die with him. In this section, Jesus comforts the sisters. On his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in, in the tomb four days. Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem, and many, many Jews had come had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them and the loss of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. Lord Martha said to Jesus, If you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection of the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. 
Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she told him. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who has come into the world. And after she said this, she went back and called, to her sister Mary, called her sister Mary aside. The teacher is here, she said, and is asking for you. When Mary heard this, she got up and went to him. Now Jesus <clears throat> Jesus had not yet, yet entered the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who, who had been with Mary in the house comforting her noticed how quickly she got up and went out, they followed her, supposing she was going to the tomb to mourn there. When Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet. Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the, Jew, the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him, he asked. Come and see, Lord, they, they replied. Jesus wept. Oh, yeah, Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, See how he loved him? Well, some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind, <laughs> blind men have kept this man from dying? Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead, is in this next section. Jesus, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time there's a bad odor, for he's been in there for four days. And Jesus said, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would, not, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me. But I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. When he said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out and his hands and feet were wrapped with strips of linen and cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. <coughs> And this part's about the plot to kill Jesus. There were many Jew, other Jews who had come to, to visit Mary and had, uh, whoops, and had seen what Jesus did, put their faith in him. But some of them went to the Pharisees and told them what Jesus had done. And the chief priests and Pharisees called a meeting of, of the Sanhedrin. What are we accomplishing, they asked. Here's, here is this man performing many, many miraculous signs. If he let him go on, on like this, everyone will believe in him. And, and the Romans will come and take away both our place and our nation. Then one of them, named Caiaphas, who was the high priest that year, spoke up. You know nothing at all. You do not realize that it's better for you that one man die for the people than that the whole nation perish. He said, did, did, did not say this. He did not say this to his own, but as high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus would die for the Jewish nation. And not only for the, for that nation, but also for the scattered children of God to bring them together and make them one. For from that day on, they plotted to take his life. Therefore, Jesus no longer moved about publicly, publicly among the Jews. Instead, he withdrew to a region in the desert, to a village called Ephraim, where he stayed with his disciples. When it was almost time for the Jewish Passover, many went up from the country to Jerusalem 
for the ceremonial cleansing before the Passover. They kept looking for Jesus as they stood at the, the temple and they asked one another, what do you think? Isn't he coming to the feast at all? But the chief priests of the Pharisees had given orders that if anyone found out where Jesus was, he should report it so that they might arrest him. Okay, we'll stop there. Next time we'll be starting chapter 12. Thank you. And um, if I got a lot going on right now, so if I don't get back, you know, on before Christmas, I wish you all a Merry Christmas. And remember, always type Christmas with capital Christ because you got to keep Christ in Christmas. That's what it's all about. It's not about families. It's not about the presents and all the hoopla. It's about Christ. Remember, please keep Christ in Christmas. I'll talk to you later, either here or up there. Bye-bye.